What is up, YouTube? That's here. Today, I'm super excited bringing you guys more Pokemon BDSP 6v6 singles OU battles. Today, we're using Miss Magus. What do you have to say about that? Miss Magus stretched out and relaxed. Oh, man. This is a, this is a reminder to relax. I know personally, I do a ton of stretches every single day, right? When I get up, gets my bud moving. Gets my, uh, you know, head in the game and lets me get my game on so I can play some BDSP 6v6 singles OU. Today, like I said, we're using this Magus. Super, super cool Pokemon. Remember, Gengar recently got banned to Ubers just because it was super, super good after a nasty plot. And remember, the old way you used to play Gengar was when it had Levitate. And Miss Magus has a little bit less speed, a little bit less special attack, uh, arguably better coverage, I would say. And it still gets nasty plot and all the all the cool things that make Gengar work. So I wanted to feature Miss Magus today and I wanted to ask you guys the question of the day. Would you guys be interested in entering a free to enter 6v6 singles BDSP tournament if I hosted one? I'm thinking if we could get a, around 16 to 32 players, I would think about making it. So if you guys are interested in that, not saying you have to enter, but if you're interested, let me know in the comments and I'll work towards making that for probably something that we would do next month. So if you're interested, let me know. Other than that, we're gonna hop right into the battles. Uh, wish me luck, guys. I think Miss Magic is a really, really cool Pokemon, so I think we're gonna dumpster some people today. So hope we have a good time. Wish me luck. Here we go. Oh man, I'm super excited to actually fight against Sableye. I think Sableye has so many options in BDSP singles with like Willow Wisp Recover strats with Prankster. That's super cool. Stuff I didn't actually used to use back in Gen 4. Let's see, in terms of what we think we're going to see, it's probably going to be an Ambipom lead, right? And if it's Ambipom, it'd be forced into, like, U-turning versus Miss Magus. So we could probably go for a sub in that situation. It might also be a Nido King, sorry, Nido Queen or a Titar. That'd be kind of bad. I think I'm going to lead Garchomp. I think Garchomp could, like, soak the fake out versus the Ambipom and basically dissuade it from doing that. But also, like, Garchomp checks Titar. So I'm going to lead Garchomp, save the fact that we're using a Scarf Rotom, and save Scizor in case we need to, like, defog away rocks. I really, really like this. I like their team. Nidoqueen's a great anti-metamon, and Garchomp can, like, low-key pin it. Depends on if it's, like, a special sweeper Nidoqueen. So Aerodactyl. So cool. They're just going to opt for rocks early. We'll be able to defog that mid-game. So we're just going to open up with a... I don't even know if they break us with a rock. Sorry, with an earthquake. I'll just go for a dragon claw. I'm not afraid of like an ice fang. Taunt's fine. Yeah, I'm not gonna go for sub. I'm just gonna two shot you a dragon claw. So you're gonna get your rocks up, and that's completely fine here. Yeah, it's a two shot on the Aerodactyl. That's the thing about Aerodactyl. It's a great rocks mon, great taunt potential, great at stopping your opponent from going for like you know, sub leads or other like stealth rock leads. So you are going to get your rocks up, but it's definitely like a suicide lead to where you get your rocks up and just lose it. And now you're really losing that base 130 speed control. So like you can send out Empoleon, but I'll just switch, you know? Um, yeah, we'll see. Is it going to be Empoleon, Sableye, or Nidoqueen? It's going to be Sableye. So that's Wisp, right? I'm just going to Infernape. Go in front of, we are going to take rocks damage and break our sash. That's totally fine. We're going to U-turn to then break sash back and then go into something that repins it after soaking a wisp. Remember, they can't wisp us here, so we're super safe. Knockoff's absolutely fine. Um, because they're going to do it like this, I think I'm actually just going to trade rocks with them because they don't have a defog user, right? Other than Empoleon. That's fine. All rocks back. We'll just trade rocks and then U-turn out if they switch to Empoleon. It's weird, I'm actually going into more of like a trade rocks scenario. The past like three or four games I've played on BDS POU, don't really always need to defog. Just kind of can trade rocks versus these teams that have like some lower tier options like Nido Queen, Sableye, and Aerodactyl. Again, people are always like, that's a you use such OU picks and your opponents are always such you do mods. I don't choose who we play. We're just in the official smog on ladder area. And they can, they can see my team and run if they don't want to play against it. I think Empoleon Switch is coming in here. Which is totally fine. Will you turn against that? Titar. Are you Scarfed? You, you're going to have to be Scarfed, bro. You're going to have to be Scarfed to deal with this. No way. But rocks are up. It might be Sashed, which I wouldn't mind losing my Infernape here. We could U-turn here and save the Infernape, but we don't really need Infernape for any matchup because it's already slower than um, the Ambipom. I'm going to go for the Ghost Combat and force the Scarf. 
We'll see. I don't think Scarf Inferno even does that much to Garchomp either. So we'll see how they want to play it. It is Scarfed! Oh my goodness! Scarf Scarf Titar, the champion. Is that a crit too? Holy moly. Alright, so how do we want to punish that? We definitely can. Miss Magis. It's time. I'm gonna put up a sub. Subs up. I know you're scarfed, bro. You have to switch. I could nasty pot actually. Aerodactyl's down. I am gonna nasty pot. Sub's cool, but it doesn't like. What are you switching to, Nido Queen? I'm gonna nasty pot on this. I'll do it. I'm gonna do it. Nasty pot. You have to switch, bro. And then I'll sub after when you want to come back in with that T tar and repin me with a crunch. I want to save the fact that we have the sub. You know. I think it's gonna be real nice. I want this nasty pot up so I can actually KO something after they switch in. So like maybe those are gonna switch in Ambiprom. Okay, that's all right. It's one nasty pot. How much damage do you think we take from like a Scald? Are you gonna Scald or are you just gonna roar? That's another good question. Should I try and sub here? What would you realistically do with Empoleon? Would you roar? They're not lefties. I'll try the sub. I don't think that's actually that bad. I don't think there's that much they actually do here. But I think that whatever move they use might not be enough to break the sub unless they're super offensive. I feel if they would have roar if they were at leftovers. And they didn't have leftovers. Survey says... Scald. See, this might not break it. We're 105 base special D. Okay, it's, it's good to know. Good to know. At the very least, we're wasting uh, sand turns. So that's good. So let's see. How much damage do you guys think Shadow Ball even does to this guy? Probably a lot. Let's go. Shadow Ds. It's going to do over half. Yeah. Special job. All right, so that's within KO range for next round. Let's see how much damage you actually do with Scald. You might switch in the T-Tar. Don't burn, please. Stance from some sides. I'm thinking about subbing here. I'm thinking about it. If you crunch, I'll just hard switch in. If you switch in T-Tar here, I'll switch in Garchomp and block the crunch. It's fine with me. I have absolutely no problem with that. Switch in your T-Tar. Go for it. Go for it. Switch in T-Tar. Yep. I'll go right into Garchomp and just repin you super easy. And bomb. Alright, does this guy get knockoff in this gen? So free leftovers tick for me. I feel like having this Pokemon isn't that bad. Like for the rest of the game. I'm going to the Garchomp. I don't think Garchomp's a bad Pokemon to bring in here. If you have knockoff, it's not the big it's not a big deal. I don't think this thing gets knockoff either. That's another thing. I don't think it gets it. It's not going for a normal attack. It's anything that's going for like some sort of weird dark attack like U or a bug attack like U-turn. Dual chop. Dragon attack on the Garchomp, bro! That's so greedy! That's actually a really good play. We're not oh my god, we high he high rolled that. Crap, that's really bad. So you have a scarf T Tar. Ambipom. Scarf T Tar Ambipom. We can still we can still get out of this. Um Scizor is good here. It's bad against Empoleon. So we have to go Rotom here. We have to give us a little bit of damage to that, the rest of their team. They know we're scarf. They're gonna go into the uh middle queen. We have to lock ourselves into Hydro Pump, don't we? We have to. We're gonna go right into the Empoleon, which we don't know its item. But we need to keep our scarf. So if you go into the Empoleon, it'll take the rocks damage, and that's fine. Go into the Empoleon. Are you really gonna risk going to Empoleon on a Hydro or a potential electric attack? I doubt it, right? No way you're going to Empoleon. This is the easiest Thunderbolt of my life. You're going to Nido Queen here. And so once we take out the Nido Queen, then we can switch out the Rotom and then relock ourselves into Thunderbolt. So let's see how they want to do this here. No way they go into Empoleon to block this Hydro. Because who would go for Hydro when Thunderbolt can get the KO and can't miss? Anyone that plays this Rotom in this situation goes for the Thunderbolt here. Show me Nido Queen! Oh my god, they actually went into Empoleon. They would have just lost the game there. SMH. Let's see if this is a two shot. Because they don't have lefties. That's so close. What are you going to use? I'm going to Hydro Pump again. I actually am not afraid of Empoleon. 
I wonder if they're going to go for a double switch as well in a T-Tar or something. Let's see. This could just high roll into it. Survey says. Okay, you got one turn. Scald. I don't care. I don't care if you burn the Rotom. It's not that big a deal. Yeah, that's fine. This is okay. Oh my god, never lucky. Burn plus like... Okay, no, no uh, Sandstorm. Burn plus Sandstorm would have been a bad idea. Can't believe there's fodder in here. Let's go. So now we can use Hydro relatively free. So Hydro's good versus Titar. Hydro's good versus uh, Sableye, technically. It's good versus um, Ambipom. It's good versus Nidoqueen. It's good versus all their mons left. We are in a little bit of a bad position, though. Um, we have the Miss Magus that can do okay against Titar if we lock them into the wrong slot, but we'll see how they want to play it. They're going to go for a fake out here. Or maybe a dual chop? No way. They, no way. They, they have to go for fake out. But then they just get to go to dual chop. I'll just go to right to scissor and then you turn out. And then we'll get to repin if they switch away. So that's a really, really good play for us. So we get a plus one free turn after that, out of this. We're taking so much rocks damage on all our mons, but I think we're going to be able to low key get this out. Fake out's fine. Scissor as lefties. We could technically go for. Um. You know, we could technically go for a defog here. I don't think we actually want to. I think we're fine keeping the rocks. We've already lost, like, all of our sashes. So we're just going to U-turn out. I think there's a high chance they go into Nido Queen here. So we're going to go into U... See them switch going into Nido Queen. We're going to break potential sash. Scout for Black Sludge on Nido Queen. Then go into Rotom and pin with Hydro Pump. It's fine. It's absolutely fine. Free switch. Take rocks damage. Take that big damage. Hydra from Rotom will KO from here. Miss Magus is good here too. Miss Magus could tunnel you into a crunch, which means we could go into Sizzle for free. Yeah, it's better to go into this than to go into Rotom here, I think. Rotom's cool, but I don't think Rotom... Like, we want to save Rotom to sweep in the back. And we get a free leftover stick here to mitigate the leftover, mitigate the Euro Rocks damage. Cool damage so far. Cool stuff so far. You see lefties on Sableye. Uh, Shadow Ball does KO here. I'm going to go for the Dazzling Gleam. It'll actually do more damage, and it would chuck the T-Tar to put it within range for um, Rotom Hydro Pump. And then, so basically, if we can chunk the T-Tar for about 40%, maybe 30%, we can actually come with Rotom and just go Hydro, 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 and win the game. They might even switch in the enemy room here, which doesn't want to take this Dazzling Gleam. So I think this is a good play here. Yep, awesome. Free KO on that guy. You can't send out Ambi Pump to repin. You have to go T-Tar. And then we get to go free switch right into Scizor, I think. Because you're locked into Crunch, basically. We could go into Blissey. I think Blissey can actually just eat the Crunch pretty well. Get another tick of Leftovers. It's going good for us. There's the T-Tar. Scarf T-Tar here. Take Rocks damage. 12%. 12.5. Okay. Scissor's the right play. We're basically at full. You'll take about 35% from Crunch. And then we'll just be able to roost out or U-turn. And then just get a big pin on whatever they decide to go into. Their only play is to like read us and go for like a weird Scarf Fire Blast play, I would say. I don't think that's what they're going to have. Yeah, Crunch, awesome. No defense drop, please. Fuck. That did a lot. That did actually way too much. That did way too much. I mean, even if they get the repin, we can just come out with Rotom, but, like, that did so much. We're just going to go for the Bullet Punch. I don't think it's okay, KO, but, like, it's worth a shot. That's at least putting them within range for Rotom to finish them off. So they have T-Tar, Ambipom, Nidoqueen. All right. We have Blissey still. That's really, really good. They're locked into Crunch. Blissey's okay here. I'm going to go on the Rotom. I think you have to go Rotom here and just go for a Hydro. We have to hit Hydros to win this game at some point, right? We know this. So Rotom's going to come in here. We have to hit this Hydro to win this game. We are faster than this T-Tar. Let's go Hydro! 
You switch! Yo! Are you gonna fodder a Pokemon here? If you fodder the Zeno Queen, we just lock ourselves in the Thunderbolt and we're in such a good spot. And I also get two shots to use this Hydro, so that's amazing! We hit the Hydro. You're gonna go into Ambipom, right? And then I'll just soak the Fake out and come out with something that pins it. Like Blissey. 15. So we die to rocks. So if you come out with Rotom here... Uh, sorry, um... If you come out with Ambipom here, you take another tick of Rocks damage, right? And then I will die to Rocks damage on whatever I send out. Like if I send out Blissey here, sorry, if I if I keep the Rotom in here, it dies to Fake Out, but also die to Rocks damage if I go for a Switch. So I think we just die to the Switch and then come in with Blissey to wall them out. Because like Rocks, I can't get rid of them anymore. So we just have to keep hydroing and hope that they go for a weird read. This is fine. I, I think this is okay. Yeah, fake out's cool. Yeah, I don't think that's a problem. It's orbed. Oh god, it's orbed. That's its that's its fault. Why are you orbed, bro? You're gonna go for the double hit. I kinda wanna go into Blissey, but I sorry, I kinda wanna go into the Miss Magus. Is there a chance that you died of sandstorm damage? Like, if I were to just switch in my mismatch, would you die to Sandstorm? Probably. It's really, really close. I think I'm just going to go for the Soft Boiled and try and wait you out. Yeah, it's fine. It's not going to get the KO. So, like, you're going to take the Life Orb damage, and I'm going to get the heal up. And then you're going to lock yourself into one move on that T-Tar. And I'm going to put the Para on your T-Tar and win with Miss Magis. Cool game. As long as I hit the T-Wave. As long as I hit the T-Wave. Sandstorm subsides. You get a brand new Sandstorm tick. Yeah, we should be good to go here. Blissey actually can just wall this out. I don't actually... Don't think I, I don't think I need them as Magus. But we'll go for the Thunder Wave pit. Actually, T-Tars are just within range for uh, Seismic Toss. We'll just go for Seismic Toss. No reason to try and like miss a T-Wave or something like that. Just go for the Toss. But we had the KO with Miss Magus. We saved Miss Magus until the end instead of just foddering it. The only way to win this one out is like rock sliding, I think. Like rock slide flinch into like rock slide crit flinch into like stuff like that, you know? They have to hit like three rocks, three or four rock slides and flinch with one or two of them and or crit. But I think we got a shot here. Rock slide, there it is. This person's playing the game correctly. Okay. And we win. Feels amazing, man. Scarf Titar almost pulled it out. Almost pulled it out, but I think Miss Magus actually did a lot of work this game. So we do be taking those, and we're going to try and use even more Miss Magus in the next game. We're going to hop into it in just a sec. Here we go. Ninjask with the barrel. What is it? Corsola Titar Blissey? This sounds like a job for Infernape. So we're going to have to bring Infernape out after we get out rocks so Ninjas can't really switch in on it. So we do want to go for rocks early, which means we could technically lead the Infernape, but I think we're just going to lead Blissey uh, and go for basically just Sash Infernape um, after they get all their Baton Passes off. I'm assuming they're going for Baton Pass Strats. And uh, we'll basically just be able to win as long as we don't get super flinched by that Ninjask. Or Ninjas, but Tom passing a T-Tar Rock Slide Flinch. You get the idea. This should be a pretty cool game. And, uh, you know, I do think that Miss Magus can be pretty good against Blissey if it's just a Seismic Toss set, but who knows? There's obviously the Ninjask right there. They're going to go for probably, like, subs or Swords Dances or something weird. We just want the Rocks up. We don't want to go for the Thunder Wave yet because there's a high chance that they sub. Protect is fine, so we're going we're to take this free turn and then just go for the free rocks. I will take these. This will break sashes on anything coming in. You're gonna have to come in with Hariyama eventually. And uh, I would love if we could actually just like paralyze that thing on the switch in. So we're actually gonna go for the Thunder Wave this turn. I doubt they're baton passing. They're probably gonna use sub, um, which means we're just gonna seismic toss from here on out. You always wanna end it so they don't have a sub up. And then basically we'll be fine. You're not gonna be able to win the game off a ninja's lead. I think Baton Pass is actually banned in, in BDSP singles, but like, it's fine. It's not the big deal. Barrel is a big problem, but we can definitely take it out with, um, because we have the rocks up. Um, as long as we make it so they don't end with a sub, we're going to be completely fine just using like Seismic Toss to break it and then just imprint it coming in. SD, so we are going to get our Thunder Wave off. That's super nice. I don't even care if you KO this Blissey. It really doesn't even matter to me. I'd love to hit this Thunder Wave. Survey says we do be hitting them. 
Standard Blissey busted. You do be loving to see that. I'd like to break this thing's sash. So we're just gonna start seismic tossing it out. Should be a three shot. They're probably gonna try and go for like um, baton passes soon. So you're baton passing, you're gonna take rocks damage and a seismic toss hit. And that's super good. You're gonna have speed boost. That's completely fine. I thought about we'll, uh, thunder waving again, but like I don't think this is that big a deal because that thing's a normal type. Inferno just comes in hot and just rinses it up with a close combat. And then you, you were basically all in on that combo because now you have a thunder waved ninjask. You're super dead. Do I need to keep this Blissey alive for literally anything? Or do we just want to stand and stop them from subbing? I think you just want to stand and stop them from subbing. They don't have leftovers or anything, but like, I think this is the right play. Curses, super fine. Yeah, like, we do static damage here. You can rest up. I don't think that's that big a deal if you have rest on this set. But normally you would see the leftovers, right? So toss again. Better than using Thunder Wave, in my opinion. It's gonna be a two shot from Th Seismic Toss, so I'll just keep doing it. If you have rest, you have rest. It's not the end of the world. Aqua Jet, you have plus two, but like, that's fine. We do be taking these. Blissey Big Busted. You are low. Oh, we got a, a pinch bear. I was gonna say, I was gonna switch in guard jump next turn. Block it. It's fine. Oh, that's a Badoop attack boost. That's fine. I'm just switching guard jump. It's fine. We can just save the Blissey from here. Blissey's still a great mom versus this team, I, I would say. And Garchomp's not super useful. If you have rest, you have rest. I can't realistically stop that. And Garchomp's just a better mon here. Because if you rest, I doubt you have Swords Dan or, or Sleep Talk. So attack boost. You're big right now. Aqua Jet. Garchomp might die. But like, you're gone. Rough skin, big bust, dude. And you went all in on that combo. Now Garchomp outspeeds your Ninjask. Uh, you can send out a T-Tar. If it's Scarf, take an Ice Beam. I get a Leftovers tick. We're in a super good spot here. You can literally use all the band tech you want. We're in a great spot. So what are they going to do? Not going to lie. DC could happen anytime, guys. DC could happen anytime. I wonder how well that like we take an Ice Punch from a non-Guts boosted Hariyama. We could almost take it, I think. Back to the Ninjas, huh? Take that Rock Sandwich all the way to the bank. Um, I think this is fine. I think at a plus one, my Garchomp still at speeds. So if you protect here and I get a free sub, I'll take it. Because you're going to want the speed boost, right? And I still think I outspeed you after a speed boost if uh, you're paralyzed. So protect there. Literally, this person's on autopilot. So subs up. We get Sword Dance here. I don't think we technically need it because our team's all like... Stuff we can just hit for super effective damage and or just way too much damage. We two shot a Blissey. We can carry the T-Tar. We can do good damage to Hariyama. Good damage to things like Corsola. I think we're fine to just go for Dragon Claw. Because if you were to just Baton Pass here, you'd switch in on the Dragon Claw. Dragon Claw plus EQ in any of those Pokemon. We get the KO. So I'll just take a free sub and Leftovers ticks. So I was like, what? This guy's punished my protect both times. How does he how is he so good to know that my ninjas would protect? It's like it's almost like I've been playing this format for like well over 10 years. I've literally been playing Gen 4 singles since like 2007. Yeah, they take the big scoop and we take the big wins. It's not gonna work on me, bro. It's not gonna work on me. Not once, not twice, not ever. We didn't get to use Miss Magic in that game, but. I feel we used Miss Magis very, very well in the first game. So if you guys like Miss Magis, think about let me know in the comments below. Also, think about answering the question of the day. How many guys would enter a BDSP singles tournament if I hosted one in our Discord? Let me know. If we can get over 16 people, I'll try and make one. And other than that, thank you so much for watching. Peace out, and I'll see you guys next time.